So welcome everybody. This is our second webinar of the New Vertic Society. New Vertic Society is a Swiss club with a Swiss connection, we like to say. Uh, we usually organize events at the Swiss Embassy or um, or store such as Victorinox, where obviously there's a Swiss, Swiss connection. Unfortunately, due to COVID-19, we're not able to do so, um, but we want to be close to our members, close to our friends, and therefore want to bring to you a bit of uh, Swiss art through webinars. So I hope you enjoy today's webinar. Uh, my name is Loredana and I'm the uh, president of the, of the New Elvetic Society. And I'm very happy to introduce to you the other members. Cristina. Hello, everybody. Good evening. Uh, it is a great pleasure to be here tonight. Uh, I am a secretary of the New Helvetica Society. And um, I will leave it to Noemi. Hello everybody, um, my name is Noemi and I just joined very recently the, the New Helvetic Society, so I'm very excited to be here tonight. Good evening everyone, I'm Marin, Vice President of the New Helvetic Society and I'm pleased to introduce you to Honedi who will present uh, tonight's presentation. Hello. Oh, hello Hene. Um, uh, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, I thought you were going to ask me a question, but... Uh, yes, I do have. That's why I... I'm sorry. I thought you had what? something to say. Right. Um, yes. This is a clear, a major undertake and project to you. And what motivates you to carry this out, leading to the exhibition in London next January? Yeah, well, that's a good question. I mean, it's... Uh, um, Probably, you know, best to answer in three three parts. But really, I wanted to reveal uh, my grandfather's um, artistic and architectural talents to a much wider audience outside of Carouge and uh, Geneva in Switzerland, where he uh, worked and was born. And we're going through the presentation. You'll see a lot of information uh, there. But uh, um, he was recognized quite quite well in Carouge. Um, uh, because of the works that uh, were commissioned uh, for him to undertake uh, to produce a definitive uh, representation of uh, Carouge as an uh, artistic colony in Italian, uh, Italian at, uh, town. And he was also a founder of a, a very important uh, uh, artist's uh, society, which is still going strong for 83 years later. So. Um, he's well known there, but I want him to be more widely recognized, I suppose, and that's one of the primary reasons. Um, but it's not simply about his artistic qualities. Uh, this started out really as an exhibition uh, and an exhibition of his paintings to, to concentrate on those. But it's turned out to be much more than that. And it is also a story about his life uh, and his qualities as a, a, as a person. Um, and um, I have a nice anecdote from my son, who um, is currently locked down in Yemen, um, uh, who said to me uh, that uh, he'd grown up having seen all these paintings on our walls in our home over the years, but really never understood very much about them beyond simply the paintings. And this presentation and the digital catalogue and what I've put together has put meat on the bone, as it were, for him, and it's revealed the man behind the, the paintings. So that's the second point. And, and, and thirdly, you know, the reason is that I want to highlight his role that he's played in um, recording Swiss heritage, um, certainly in the Canton de Genève, uh, uh, Geneva itself, and um, as you'll see, a, a lot of other uh, places, but uh, but in particular Geneva. So that's those are the those are the answers, if you like, to 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 that first question. That's a very interesting, Noemi. Yes, I have another question for you, René. Um, mm. Are you able to say why you joined the New Helvetic Society? Yes, well, I think that's a simple one, really, because as I've already explained, you know, he's relatively well known um, in Geneva and Carouge not very well known, but relatively well known because of uh, his accomplishments and what I've just uh, pointed out. But uh, he's not known here at all, of course, in, in the UK. And um, uh, so I thought it was an opportunity to, um, 
you know, present him um, with what will be almost, uh, well, just over 200 of his works, which have come from all over the world through friends and family that uh, have had them for a long time. So it's, um, and, and also joining your society was, was a way of, of reaching the Swiss community in, in, in the UK. And uh, for, for me, that was, I thought that was quite important. And so, and, and I have to say, actually, you've been tremendously helpful and supportive uh, uh, um, in, in, in helping me to, to achieve it to, so far. So shall I carry on and, and take you through the presentation? Indeed, uh, please go yeah. ahead. All right, so um, there's a biography here of, of him and as you can see, born in 1892 um, and um, lived in the Grand Rue, the old town of, uh, of Geneva in Switzerland. Um, his parents were Otto and Julie Fanny Morin, you'll see a little bit more of them. Married in 1917 in the Temple de Versoie, uh, educated in Geneva College, and uh, his profession was as uh, an architect, principally. He was 30 years working for the Geneva State Council. Um, and the exhibition the main themes, really, and, and the presentation that you're about to see is uh, principally architectural, uh, he was an architect after all, and the paintings uh, that he uh, made, he had a specific interest in architectural characteristics. So you'll see it's, you know, stairs and, and eaves and, and, um, and, and the style and, and, and personality or architectural structures of, of buildings and, and settings. So. Um, but uh, there is also a very strong historical and heritage theme, which I'll go through as we go through the actual pictures and things. So this is the the introductory biography, if you like. And we start off with the first painting, which I think is a beautiful painting of Geneva, the representing Geneva in the 1920s, the Cathedral, the Saint Pierre, first and foremost in front there. And the old town of Geneva, um, you know, in and around it. It's a, it's a lovely painting. Um, he did a few, quite a few paintings of the cathedral in different settings. And here's one of the, um, the courtyard of the cathedral. Um, um, oh, sorry, I think we'll have to just go back. Here we are. Yeah. And he lived in right, right at the top of Grand Rue, which if, I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with Geneva and, uh, and the town itself, but it's at the very top of the old town um, and next to the, these, the, this building here, the Arsenal uh, and um, uh, the Hotel de Ville, but you've also got very close by the, the Bourg de Four and, the, and Le Perron and all those streets leading up to the top uh, of um, of the old uh, of the old town, and 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 they lived in Grand Rue, um, which was um, just uh, around the corner from here. This is La Tour uh, La Tour Baudet, which is the seat of the Geneva government, and where actually Maurice worked uh, for for um, almost thirty years. Uh, and as I say, he was raised, born and raised literally just a stone's throw from that building. Here he is, uh, aged five years old, looking very cheeky and uh, chirpy. Um, I'm not quite sure what the, um, uh, the dress is. Uh, I still haven't actually found out, I'm afraid, whether it's uh, from Loitville or from, or from Geneva, because his father was from Loitville um, in the uh, Argyll, Argovy region. Um, and next to here, you've got a, a, you know, a representative painting of his, um, uh, you know, one of his favorite subjects, which, is, which was the old town of Geneva. And, and, and these extraordinary buildings of the time, um, not many of which have survived. Uh, and this is actually Place Belmont. Uh, not exists still, but and still has characteristics, but not the same as, as those. Um, and here he is at, uh, at, co at college. Um, and he went to Geneva College, which is a very famous college. It's now called uh, College Calvin. It was established by uh, Calvin originally. Um, and here is uh, Maurice here, third from the left, sitting on the floor there. 
um, and there were some strong connections with the Collège Calvin. You'll see later on uh, he painted, uh, you'll see shortly, but he painted the Collège in various phase, at, in various times and various phases. Uh, here's uh, an old picture of the, the Collège, doesn't look like that anymore, no trees anymore, um, and, um, but it, it, it's uh, a very long-standing and, and uh, very good school which he went to and so did his son uh, who was also called Bonnet. Um, so here's two lovely paintings of the college uh, courtyard, one in uh, winter and one in, 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 in the summer. And unfortunately, as I say, this, this tree, which was right in the center, uh, has gone and there's some, big, some fairly big changes that have under, been undertaken in, in, in the college courtyard itself. Um, that's a nice representation of it too, part of the, of the courtyard. So here's um, Otto Kaspar, his father, and this was a pharmacy which he ran. Um, and uh, it, uh, in those days, pharmacies uh, didn't sell tablets or, or, or pills. Um, they sold lotion, lotions and potions. And he was a trained botanist. Um, so he went out into the Swiss uh, mountains and hills and, and countryside and, and, and collected all of the uh, necessary ingredients to uh, make those uh, necessary potions and lotions. And they went in downstairs underneath here, there used to be a big vat and all those potions and lotions were made in that big vat. Uh, and, uh, but he was a respected figure, um, uh, a boy, he was, he was well known in, in Geneva, sort of high society as it were. Uh, he was a prominent member of the radical party. Um, and, um, and he also became the very first president of the Société de Pharmaciens uh, Genevois, uh, which didn't exist before, and he held that position for five years. Um, so um, that was uh, where uh, Maurice was, uh, was raised, in, in an apartment above there. Uh, and this is just um, uh, an old document. I've, I've inherited so much material from my family, from my mother and my aunts, my Swiss aunts and my other um, Swiss family. It all came to me <laughs> and so I've spent the last uh, 15 years or so going through it and making sense of it but uh, it's come in very handy for this kind of presentation which illuminates and illustrates uh, the, the person and the people involved. Um, and um, uh, there was another connection with uh, another quite important and uh, very um, uh, established uh, a pharmacy family who were called the Morin and um, uh, Otto actually married twice but, and his second wife was uh, uh, Fanny um, uh, Morin, who, Julie Fanny Morin uh, and um, that proved to be quite important much later on because uh, Constant Morin, uh, her cousin, actually helped out financially later on where, when needed but this is the Morin Pharmacy in Lausanne. Um, so, uh, and, um, and, um, and Julie Fanny Morin also had connections in the artistic world. And so here's where the first artistic connection comes in and uh, artistic influences. And uh, who better than to be associated with Ferdinand Hodler, one of uh, Switzerland's most uh, recognized and uh, important uh, uh, artists of the, of the time. And um, Julie Fanny Morin actually knew Hodler uh, and actually acted ad, as, as his model uh, for this painting. This is a very well-known two, two paintings which uh, represent uh, um, uh, summer and winter um, uh, uh, depictions of uh, the man on his, on, on his donkey. And so this is uh, Julie Fanny Moller here acting as a model. So already there was an established connection with an artistic community. Um, this is a, I, I love this painting and, and I've only recently discovered quite what it, what it was because unfortunately Maurice never actually um, annotated 
all of his paintings on the back. Some he did and some he didn't, and some were dated and some weren't. So uh, I've had to do a lot of um, uh, research and, uh, um, and and working out in terms of both where these places were and the locations and also the dates. But uh, this is uh, from actually taken from Mollis's apartment above the pharmacy uh, in Grand Rue, but looking across uh, to um, uh, Rue Verden and the Saint Germain Saint Germain Church, which is which is here, you can see uh, quite clearly. This uh, coloration and sort of very rude um, and and very kind of um, uh, basic. Uh, artistic application you'll see he in his very early paintings it, it was it was like this but it changed much later as you'll see also so here he is he he then went to uh zurich um for uh his architectural uh, diploma and spent three years there as an architectural student uh zurich polytechnic and that was his calling card and this is their apartment uh, above the pharmacy. That's Otto, that's Julie Fanny, um, that's Maurice, that's one of his colleagues in the uh, Zurich um, uh, architectural course. This lady, I don't know who she is, um, might be his mother, I, um, I, I don't know. But uh, interestingly enough, I do still have this table in my sitting room. <laughs> so there is still, um, uh, a connection of um, family items. And here they were actually celebrating the celebration of uh, uh, the writer and composer Jean-Jacques Rousseau, who was actually born in uh, not far from where they lived in Forty Grand Rue and had died 134 years before in 1778. So they were a cultured and, uh, um, yeah, you know, cultured family really. Um, this is a nice uh, painting also of the rooftops of um, actually an area in Saint-Gervais, um, which uh, I'm going to take you through and explain the importance of it. Um, but I think it's a lovely, um, a, a lovely uh, paintings and you can painting and you can see the Jura in, in the background. Um, and um, yeah. So here is a painting which actually historically is quite important, historically in terms of uh, Geneva's history, but also in terms of um, kind of heritage. And uh, uh, you know, this is this is the Quai de Saget in um, in Saint Gervais uh, on the other side of the Rhone, um, and you can see the this is the cathedral, the top of the Saint Gervais. Sorry, let me just go back. No, I've gone the wrong way. Just one second, I'll turn back, here we are. Yeah, um, and um, the importance of this is that he recorded uh, the whole area, almost the whole area of Saint-Gervais, which was big, um, within uh, the, you know, the, the, foot, the, the um, uh, footprints of, of Geneva itself. Um, but controversially, it was actually totally demolished uh, in the 1930s. Uh, so his recording of these of this area um, in its totality uh, was quite important. There are photos, of course, of it, but not many people, I don't think, actually painted the area as such. And as you can see, there were there were nice houses. Uh, the interesting factor also in in his own circumstances is that he was. He acted as an architect uh, d'hygieniste uh, for the uh, uh, for the State Council of Geneva, and um, and and his role, therefore, was to go and inspect all of these properties um, and Saint Gervais in particular um, during the early period to determine whether they were fit for habitation and uh, you know architecturally and otherwise, um, and unfortunately much of the area was not uh, and over a very long period of time um, there were all kinds of reports and, and discussions and deliberations which actually ended up in the whole area being being demolished completely torn down um, I mean some of the some of the some of the the, 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 
the buildings and the areas were in decay. And you can see this is the, you know, these are two quite kind of well-known um, uh, spots in, 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 in the area, the Allée du, du Cell. Uh, those, are, those are postcards, uh, but these are his actually paint, his paintings of them. So the, the Allée du Cell there and, uh, and Rue de Cégé. The, there is still a Rue de Cégé, which goes up to the Temple de Cégé here, but um, it's doesn't look like that. It's all brand new and modern buildings. So these paintings are really, I think, quite significant and quite important, actually, historically. Um, and they tell a story. Um, uh, this is uh, another part of the older town, further down. Well, this is actually, because you can see here, the Tour de Ile. Um, uh, but uh, again, all of this has, uh, has gone. Doesn't exist any longer. Um, and postcard showing here the Passage des Terrasses Rue de Coupance, uh, which again he painted uh, from the other side. Um, and again, that has also disappeared. So um, these represent disappearing, you know, a large part of disappearing Geneva, which, uh, which he recorded for posterity. Um, and it was a very controversial decision when they did demolish it, and he was actually opposed to it. Ultimately, it was a very difficult uh, thing for him to, to stomach, having been so closely involved with it. So in um, 1914, he went with his um, Zurich uh, Polytechnic uh, architectural class on a tour of uh, Italy. And um, here he is in Venice. Um, and later he did a second tour um, in 1922 and took in further parts of, of, of Italy and also France and so painted uh, a number of paintings on that particular on those particular uh, tours and this is uh, I think a lovely one of, of, of Naples it really captures the um, the identity and uh, ambiance if you like of, of, of Naples at that time uh, and, um, and the Bay of Naples a very simple one very un prepossessing unlike a lot of his paintings actually, which are so architectural and so detailed, this is totally different. Um, and I think interesting therefore. Um, Palazzo Pubblico Verona, if you have been to Verona, that's, it still looks a bit like that, not quite, but it's uh, <laughs> still impressive. Um, and also the Ponte Pietra, uh, which is also still there. And he made a, a woodcut of it as well. Um, and then, of course, uh, like all uh, Swiss uh, men, um, they had to go to had to do their military service, and he wasn't any exception. So he went, and uh, he was uh, stationed and did his service in uh, the Chauvin Mountains, over uh, the border in, with France. Uh, and here he is in his uniform. He was a sapper, um, and it was during during the uh, First World War, of course. Uh, it was there in 1915. Um, and here's one of the first of many sketches. I've got a whole booklet of, of his sketches, which are wonderful. Uh, some are purely up, purely sketches of faces like this one is. Um, but others are, are architectural sketches, which relate to the work that he carried out um, for um, clients in both Cavalry and in Geneva. Uh, and this is a, a, a little moment. Um, leaflet of a, of a soiree uh, for the benefit of uh, soldiers, needy soldiers. Um, so he actually drew that. That's saint Imier, I think it is saint Imier. Yeah, it is saint Um And I'm a stamp collector as well, so I'm interested in the stamp. And it's Frank there. It's rather nice. Soldier stamps, Swiss soldier stamps are collectible. Um, another little sketch here of uh, a farm in, in, the, in the Jura mountains. And, and here is um, a letter actually confirming his very first appointment uh, as, as, uh, as an architect uh, de Geniste uh, um, uh, with the public health department in, in Geneva, a technician. Um, and as I say, uh, he went on to work for them for 30 years. That's the very last letter that actually confirmed his, uh, his further appointment 
um, and I don't have any other record of, of, of that from then on. Um, I like this picture as well because actually it's obviously as it uh, depicts it's the end of the war and it's painted on arms to stay uh, in Geneva, lovely colours, lovely sort of feeling of uh, freedom and things and I picked this uh, supplement up at uh, the flea markets in Plain Palais in Geneva um, and I had to bargain for it uh, but I think it was worth, worth getting because it's quite a, a rare supplement probably in terms of uh, what it depicts and it actually complements the painting very well. Here's some more pictures with flags and this is uh, the you know the national public holiday in, in, in Switzerland 1st of August in 1930 uh, and this one is um, actually quite mm, interesting from a personal point of view as well because this depicts flags flying outside here to uh, uh, to commemorate or to, to welcome the uh, first General Assembly of the Société des Nations which was uh, they've been given the uh, uh, they've been given the um, position of, of, of it being uh, positioned there when it first started. Um, but the, I suppose, the, you know, the, the, the personal interest and connection is that my late wife actually was, uh, um, worked at the Palais des Nations in Geneva for some years. Um, and my son went on to work for, and still is working in, for the United Nations and is currently out in Yemen with the World Food Programme. So an interesting, picture for me. There's his calling card, his, his, his proper card for uh, um, as an architect. And then we come on to um, something, uh, yes, the Desus de Gallier Caspar connection. I said this because at this point he got married um, and he got married to, um, he got married to uh, Adele Suzanne Henriette de Gallier. Um, who obviously came from the de Gallier family and who lived in Versoix. Uh, and they were a, a very prominent bourgeois um, and very, also very um, elevated uh, family. This is their house, beautiful house that still exists and it was renovated some years ago and I had the opportunity of going to see it, but this is it in 1920 with the family gathering on, on a, again, a national day. Um, in August, um, but um, uh, the the Desus and de Gallier families between them, they were respectively there were two two of them who were mayors for I think four times over the period, and they were responsible uh, for really the development of Versoix as we know it today um, because of the amenities they put in running water and tram lines and education, and the, the port was developed. One of the Desus uh, family was an architect and he developed the, the port of the current port of uh, Versoix. So they were an important uh, family, but they ran this uh, uh, confectionery uh, business, which was called Bonbon, uh, it was called Bonbon de Desus later on, but it was first of all, um, yeah, the uh, Gallier Desus. Uh, um, and um, and, and, they, and they actually um, produced uh, an, an extraordinary um, selection of, of, of really rather wonderful confection, uh, which was traded all around the world. Um, and uh, they won all kinds of awards. And, uh, and these are a certain number of cards, and which I've, some of which I've inherited, but I've also found them on eBay. and. Uh, I'm a great researcher and it's been quite exciting finding those. So here's Maurice uh, with, um, uh, she's called Georgette, um, uh, getting married uh, in um, January 1917. Um, uh, and um, he did these little uh, cards for, for them both representing uh, uh, the carriage uh, going back to Pasha, and this one is uh, is the um, is the um, uh, the house in uh, in Versoir. and a family grouping. Um, there's Maurice there, 
that's Georgette. Those are the two de Galliers. Um, that's actually Maurice's sister with her first child. Uh, this is the um, this is her mother, Marie de Zeus. And um, that's Otto Caspar, Julie Fanny Caspar, and this is a grandmother. So uh, quite a big uh, gathering uh, to celebrate the, 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 the christening of uh, Maurice and Georgette's first uh, child, who was Edme. And um, here's a recognition of the de Gallier de Zeus, um, uh, what they actually did for Versoir, because they were presented with this uh, seal, uh, the official seal of, of Versoir, uh, who, which was later uh, sent on to um, uh, uh, René de Gallier, uh, who with his brother left Versoir in 1904 and traveled across to Saskatchewan and became homesteaders. <laughs> and in those days, Cree Indians were still um, in uh, Saskatchewan, it was then the Dominion of Canada, and uh, they lived a very um, Spartan existence, uh, and their father could never understand why they'd done that, but uh, they uh, eventually moved across into um, uh, Canada to uh, Victoria, and, uh, and then later into, into, into Washington State in, in, in in the USA, and I'm still in contact with uh, some of some of those um, uh, um, those that followed the the, the Gallian family. So that's quite interesting. And here again, um, if you like, um, uh, confirmation of the uh, position that they held um, with a book written by Jean Ferrier and countersigned by the then mayor of Versoir to Georgette Caspar after Molly's death as well as this 1953 um, and en respect to homage. Um, so it, it, they, they, they were a prominent, a prominent family. Moving on, this is uh, something which was held in uh, uh, 1939 at the um, uh, at Plain Palais, the, the, the Salle Communale de, de Plain Palais. And it was a, a, an anniversary, really, of uh, the 50th anniversary of the gymnasia, which was the grouping that, that um, controlled, if you like, um, the um, college, the Calvin, which uh, Maurice had obviously gone to. And this is the organizing committee, and there he is there. Uh, he, was a, he was a member of it. Um, and that's a picture of him. By the way, the, the picture on the, on the front cover of the, of, the, of the brochure of the catalogue was done by uh, a, a very well-known artist and, and uh, sculptor called uh, Pedro Mela, who um, Morris was, was friends with. And this is an anniversary grouping in the Collège de Calvin. Uh, Maurice is over here. Uh, so uh, it was a very successful event, and he actually painted the Sour Communal, communal um, and did all of the, uh, yes, the, the presentation of it. So here's some more paintings. Uh, this one of, of Coppe, I like very much, uh, from seen from the uh, from the Lac, and also here inside Rue Froide. Um, again, you sorry, I'll just go back to that. But I mean, there's that kind of similar um, browny, purpley colors which uh, which he used uh, to begin with and here a, a place in, in Coppe where he actually displayed and sold a lot of his paintings from and here not only his his his, uh, his drawings on on on, um, on tracing paper which I, I, I've got a, a lot of um, one of his relatives was buried here I've been to this little village it's uh, it doesn't look like that anymore I can tell you um, but it's, uh, it's, it's up in the Lurchenthal uh, Valley, Kippel, and it has this uh, interesting um, cemetery as well uh, with these blue crosses. Um, and there's a, quite a, a series of these that, uh, that, that exists. But uh, yes, so that's going back to the 1930s. And of course, these villages have changed quite considerably, as you probably know. Um, where once again, but uh, Kippel, um, but this one is Saint-Brachet, 
which is in the Valley de Bagne, in Valais. And now we move on to um, Côte d'Azur and, and France, because uh, he did go to France, as I, as I said, um, and uh, he went down there and did a series of paintings of Saint-Tropez. Uh, and again, um, you won't recognize Saint-Tropez from these paintings anymore, but because it's changed considerably, that's, they're rather quaint and rather lovely pictures of Saint-Tropez in the day. And obviously, like a lot of resorts in Spain, um, they were appealing for the reasons that they were, um, you know, very, very isolated and not very many people around, and it was uh, nice places to go. Um, these were actually made, sorry, I'll just go back, but yeah, these were the last selection of paintings in, I've shown you in France. They were actually made into uh, postcards and uh, they, were, they were commercially used and uh, you can still find them actually on eBay. Um, uh, Carcassonne, he went there too. Uh, here's the Cathedral of Saint-Étienne uh, in, um, in Toulouse and uh, Annecy, famous uh, scene of, uh, of Annecy, the main, main site there. Uh, and this is back to the uh, Canton de Genève and the uh, Cartigny and um, and again, this is one of the, the, the tracing paper uh, drawings. I've got lots of these and they are just beautiful. They really are. They were all the, and you can see now that how interested he was in architectural detail. Uh, and so he, the reason he painted buildings was as much to do with the architectural features of the buildings that, that, that interested him as another one. And I discovered this. Uh, I didn't know where this was, but we went looking for it and found it but when you get to it you wouldn't really it's prominent because of the way in which he's drawn it and painted it uh, and it's in you can see what it is and again he's, he's he's drawn it here in, in pencil but when you get up close to it, it it's the building in fact goes much much further back it's not just on its own it looks as though it is on its own but it isn't so it's quite difficult to discern um, but we found it and um yeah, it's quite, quite, quite exciting when you find something like that. Um, Manoa Champong, there was some kind of connection, family connection with this. Um, it's um, in the Canton de Genève again, and, and there's quite a few paintings of it. But again, here's the, here's the um, drawing of it uh, before it's painted. And um, they produced their own uh, Chasselet wine here, or well, they did anyway. Um, some time ago that I, when I was there. Chateau de Chillon, probably one of the most uh, well-known sites uh, in, uh, in Switzerland. Um, nice rendition of it and his Ex Libris I put there as well. Um, and then a card here that he made, he, he, did a lot of, he did a lot of other things. He was, he was artistic in all sorts of ways and so he used to make up all these place cards for, for celebrations and uh, this is for the 10 years of the uh, marriage between himself and uh, Rochette. And that's a lovely photo of him and his three children. And that's my mother and that's my aunt uh, and that's my Uncle Rennie. Um, sadly, they're all gone, of course, but uh, yeah, it's a lovely, lovely photo of them in Pasha, which is where they uh, lived after they left. Uh, in the old town. Um, and here's another set of, of, of paintings which actually were commercially uh, produced into prints. Uh, they weren't produced as postcards, these, but they were certainly produced in, 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 as prints and, um, and, and sold uh, and also produced in a, in a book, composite book with other artists which represented villages and uh, typical themes of, of, uh, of Switzerland and France. So they're rather lovely. And you can see his style at this point in time, very, very different, a lot more sophisticated, but still impressionist and, and wonderful. And this, believe it or not, is a jigsaw puzzle. Um, and I found this not so long ago, only about a year ago. <laughs> and I never realized that any was had been made into it jigsaw puzzle what it is it's a 150 piece jigsaw puzzle um of this of this painting which actually sorry of this painting which was also made into a print so all made by one company called um uh, well 
yeah, Cella, C E A C E L A, and um, obviously his his work was seen as, as commercially uh, viable, or commercially interesting. And these are the wonderful uh, Bach, uh, traditional Bach uh, Savoyard, uh, which um, sadly there's only two left now on the Lake of Geneva, one in Lausanne and one in Geneva. But these used to ply their trade regularly across from this little village called Meillery, which is on the French side of the Lac de Le Mans. Um, and they used to ply their trade because they used to collect stone, um, which was quarried from that, uh, uh, from, from the side of the, the village. Here's the village. It's, it doesn't look very much different from that now, to be honest. It hasn't changed very much. Uh, but there was a big quarry, stone quarry up here, and they would, um, uh, not very sophisticated, it was just a ramp, and people used to haul these things on hand carts, great big wedges of, of, of stone. Uh, I've seen film footage of it, actually, it's quite scary. Um, and, um, and much of that stone was shipped across to the other side of the, the lake to the Geneva side, and the Palais de Nation, um, a lot of that was built with that stone, and a lot of the frontage of uh, the Quai de Berg was also built with that stone. Um, so an interesting period, um, and possibly not very well known today. Uh, some more scenes here, uh, rural scenes uh, of um, Verbier. Uh, again, uh, Verbier has changed quite a lot. Um, Here's a, a, a landscape which he didn't paint very many of, but it's quite nice of the Jura and a view from his house in Pasha across looking to what's called the Salev, which uh, I used to climb with my heart as a boy. Um, and that's how the church at Verbier looked at, at that time as well. Uh, coming back into Geneva, this is uh, the Temple of the Chêne Bougerie. I don't know whether you know that. Um, he painted it because he had a half brother, in fact, from um, uh, Otto's first marriage, and um, and and um, and he lived in Chêne Bougerie. So this is one of the um, one of the things that actually makes him. Um, gives him the recognition that I think he, he, he not only should have but does have is that he was a founder member of this uh, society called La Palette de Carougeoise in 1937. There was 13 of them and um, multidisciplined artists and uh, including Pedro Milan which um, I, I mentioned before and um, they're still going strong 83 years later they're still going strong and they celebrated their 75th anniversary with uh, this uh, little brochure. Um, so uh, he was quite influential in, in, in that respect. And it was as a result of that, and we'll come to it shortly, but that he was commissioned to paint um, uh, for a, a major, a major uh, commission. Um, well, this is, um, uh, this is again, Maurice, obviously, uh, Georgette, this is uh, René, and this is my mother. Um, and it's, uh, interesting in as much as this is his drawing and he obviously was architecturally um, interested in designing <laughs> um, where the pewter was held and incidentally the answer I, I do have all of these <laughs> still um, and then again, again another example of um, his sort of artistic uh, um, ability if you like um, and these are place cards for uh, um, a New Year's Eve celebration, uh, they were um, collage, so quite fun. And they represented each member of the family, so this is his wife, um, this is him, <laughs> the alcohol. Uh, this was Rennie, the, his son, who was a stamp collector, as I am now. Um, this is my mother with the pigtails, and this is Edme, my aunt, who was very sportive. So there we are, that's that's a representation done that way. So. Yes, here's the artistic, the other artistic, major artistic commission which he, uh, which he was asked to do, uh, and produced actually 33 definitive paintings of Carouge, 
uh, street scenes, and they are in the Museum of Cabouche right now and have been used extensively to depict the Cabouche itself. It's become a very important artistic center in Switzerland. Um, and um, uh, uh, and I'm, 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 yes, and um, no, I forgot what I was going to say now. No, but uh, it, um, the, the, the paintings, oh, yes, no. Um, and I, I've seen them in the museum on, on a number of occasions, and um, and I'm I'm very pleased to say that actually they have, have very recently um, said that they are supporting my exhibition in London, and their ex-director, who I knew very well, is going to come over for the the preview evening. So that's very nice, and they'll help promote it as well. Um, this is this big um, catalogue which they produced, and that's the entry in it for him. Uh, this thing sh shows, give details of, of him. Um, this is a print of uh, the Saint Croix Church in um, in Geneva at that time, and he, apart from the thirty three paintings in Carouge, uh, that he painted a lot of other paintings of, of Carouge, but this is one of them, the lovely Saint-Croix and the Fontaine de la Vignac. Um, and these two paintings I love because actually there's, again, one of those really kind of rude uh, early paintings, uh, but I quite like, and you can see the difference between that the, they're the same subject, but treated very differently. Um, a drawing, architectural drawing for a for work he did in um, in, in a house in uh, Grand Rue. Um, more architectural drawings. They were actually adverts, two adverts for a company called Bechler at that, at that time, who who had their their their, um, their offices and their premises here in that, in that building in Carouge. Um And this is Carouge, um flags flying for the Fête. Cantonal de Gymnastique uh, in 1921. And I'm very proud of myself because I actually found that on eBay um, uh, to be able to put alongside it. That's only about five weeks ago. So uh, my research skills are increasing. Um, Canal de Carouge, um, rather nice one, and um, two areas in. Um, one in uh, the Val de Bagne, Moulin de, de Copper, Cotel, and also the village de Verrier. Um, he, he had a book which was um, produced by a man called Tor Capo, um, who depicted all of these old farmhouses, manoir, and chateaux that were in decay and declining and fading away. So he actually uh, made a point also of recording a lot of those places, and actually that's that's the same that's the same building taken from a different point, but there's there's a very similar rendition of it. Um, uh, this is a, a bridge across the Rhone in Cecil, and a bridge across uh, the river in uh, Geneva. Um, and these are lunch cards which she drew, uh, again representing um, uh, my my parents and also uh, him and Georgette. Um, you can see my father, who was British, he had the uh, Tower Bridge. <laughs> um, and this is uh, their home in Pancha. Uh, this is uh, Novice's home in uh, in Geneva. And this is the Hotel Richmond where they had the reception. So it's the reception for my, my parents' wedding. Um, and um, this is a painting of Les Ballantour in Baal. Morris came up to Baal on a number of occasions uh, and did quite a few paintings while he was there. And the reason that he did so was uh, because uh, I was born in Baal in 1946 in March and uh, he came up to see his daughter and and me and while he was there he painted and here's a rare photo well I don't have another photo but this is the only photo showing him actually sitting at work sketching a painting or a sketch 
which eventually would turn out into a painting, which is that. So that's uh, a nice uh, a record of him at work. And here's some more paintings of his work in and around Baal, um, Schloss Bottingen, which looks like that uh, now. Uh, the Eglise de Saint Paul, the sketch. And then um, this is the Temple de Fusterie in Geneva, which is a very old uh, Protestant uh, temple set up by the Huguenots. Uh, after the revocation of the Edict de Nantes when they fled from southern France and they went up to northern France and into Switzerland and this was built specifically for them and um, uh, they got married, uh, they didn't get married in, in here but uh, this was their temple and um, uh, my mother was uh, christened in here and then so, so was I and there I am. I don't look very different. Um, <laughs> and um, yeah, traditional Swiss costumes, uh, he, as I said, I said earlier, he, he, he was quite um, prolific and, 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 and different artworks. And this is a set of, of wooden um, uh, um, discs, which uh, went onto a playpen um, and uh, representing all different uh, cantonal uh, well, individuals and, and, and their dress, uh, which, which, which I still have. Um, and that's the original playpen, and they were positioned around the pen like that. So it, it, this has been used by my mother and, my, and her, her, her sister, uh, myself and my son. Uh, so <laughs> it's gone through the, the generations. Um, I said that he didn't do very many landscapes, and, and um, this is not quite a landscape, but I mean, it's, uh, it's a very early painting. Again, you can tell in 1914, looking across from the, the Jura Mountains, across the lake. And another one here, which is uh, also very, not, very lovely and reminiscent also, it's it, or redolent to to, to Ferdinand Hodler, who used similar colors and similar style. And uh, Le Pont Neuf in, in Carouge with the River Arve running underneath it. It's, it's, that's a poignant photo because uh, unfortunately he committed suicide uh, in December 1946 by drowning in the river. And um, so the river is a poignant photo, um, and that's the notice in the Journal de Genève, which uh, uh, identified the fact that he had died. So I put these, these are still life uh, portraits of, or other, sorry, paintings of, uh, that he, he had done at various stages, which I think are lovely and fit the place. And coming to the end now, you know, this is the a new generation. This is a picture of Alexandre Caspar, who is the great grandson of Maurice, and is himself an artist and uh, did a degree course in University of Geneva art history degree course, and has been absolutely fascinated to learn about his great grandfather, which he knew nothing about. So he uh, is um, very interested in the exhibition and has been helping me, uh, and is has expressed his gratitude at being, at having had the family history revealed to him. And probably the most exciting thing that's happened very, very recently is that uh, in May this year, I was contacted by Marc Laurent saying that he had actually looked at my digital catalogue online because um, he was interested in finding out about Maurice Caspar. Um, the reason being is that he actually had 70 original paintings of his, <laughs> which had come down the line to him from his grandfather, who had known Maurice uh, in those days and had bought 70 of those paintings from him and they stayed in his house throughout that period and they are still there now. And this is one of them. This is a beautiful representation of the Chateau d'Aigle.
with the, with the houses in, in, in front. Uh, so there are 70 new paintings which I'm in, uh, in the process of trying to identify. And this is simply um, an inventory and, 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 and credits for the number of paintings that exist. And they are held by friends and family all over the world. But we will be bringing many of them together um, for the exhibition in London next year. And there, as I say, there will be 200 of them. So uh, thank you very much for your interest and your patience in letting me go through this with you. This is the last photo. It's one of Molly's uh, age 10. Um, I just thought I'd end on that. Uh, no, no further comment. Um, and uh, thank you again for, for listening. And, and I'm very happy to take any questions that you have. Thank you, Renee. That was uh, very interesting indeed. And I'm, I'm sure that all of us are looking forward actually to to go and see it live, <laughs> yeah. COVID permitting. <laughs> well, yes, that's right. yes. Indeed. Um, I'd like to ask um, the audience now if they have questions. So that's your chance to submit them by the Q&A sections or, or chat. I'm, I'm sure that you have many questions in uh, those of you that uh, will be joining us. I'm certain that you can ask this question to Renee directly, <laughs> but if you want to do it now through the Q&A section, please do, do go ahead and, 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 and do it uh, now. Um, I'm sure Renee is happy to take uh, two or three. I know that uh, uh, we have some already that have been sent through. Just looking through the questions. Okay. So, should I leave it to uh, Christina and Noemi to go through the, the questions that are submitted? Yeah, fine. I'm, 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 I'm happy to answer questions. Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. Lovely. Thank you. Mm. Mm. So, we have a first question for you. What can we expect in the exhibition in January? Um, uh, the short answer is, is uh, an exciting selection of diverse um, pictures which represent, um, uh, you know, um, his life and his work, I suppose. I mean, I, I think, you know, what's exciting to me and hopefully is exciting to other people is that he's never been shown publicly. He, there are 33 paintings of his in the Museum of Carouge, um, but at n nowhere else has any of his work, and certainly none of the works that, that I have. Uh, been um, been presented to the general public, and uh, and I, I I think he's he's an artist worth worth uh, revealing. So that's why I entitled the you know the the title of the of, of the of the exhibition, the life and works of Maurice Caspar, Swiss art water artist uh, and architect revealed. Uh, so I'm hoping that other people will you know be ex as excited as I am. I'm biased, of course, but. Uh, Does that help? Yes, thank you very much. We have another one, actually. Um, okay. This person is asking if your grandfather was self, a self-trained painter, and they are saying that his paintings are great. Oh, well, thank you very much. That's very nice to hear. Uh, yes, he was a self-trained artist. Um, I mean, he, he clearly was an architect, first and foremost. You know, um, he didn't go to any school to learn painting, but he did go to Zurich Polytechnic to become an architect. And I think it's it's obviously from that. I think one of the the earliest painting I think of his is is 1912, and he was he was in Zurich Polytechnic uh, uh, around that time. So he, he started painting about that time, and and he was self-taught basically. And I and I you can see. I hope you've been able to see that there is a progression because I pres the presentation is being made in that way as a sort of chronological presentation of his work. But uh, you can see the, the, the development of, of his painting. It's almost as though he's, he has developed as he's gone on. Okay, and I have another one for you, and actually it's a question that I'm sharing um, right. myself. Will any of the paintings be for sale? Um, sadly, no. Um, I, 
No, I, I mean, I haven't really, the exhibition wasn't, the purpose of the exhibition wasn't to sell his works. It was to really show them and present him as an artist of some caliber and to put him on the map and so that he gets better recognition, if you like. So, so uh, I'm afraid I'm, I, I don't, I, I haven't got any for sale. But I could actually, I mean, it's an interesting question. I, I haven't been asked it yet. So um, I, I suppose I could, what might follow is that I produce um, prints of them, which uh, if, uh, if that's of interest, I know it's not the same thing, but. Uh, I'm sure prints will do fine, Rene. Uh, okay. I would be buying it. <laughs> I believe Christina has some further questions to ask. Am uh, I correct, Christina? Oh, I can't unmute Christina. Let me see. I think you have it muted yourself. Okay, there you are. <laughs> no, still muted. <laughs> Try again, Christina. Sorry. Okay, don't worry, don't worry, it's okay. Yeah, um, an exhibition in next year, will be there anyone from Switzerland, like a family members or members from Geneva, people have been connected? Yes, work? yes, so, no, yes, there will be. I mean, first of all, there is um, fam well, Alexandre, I, who I've pointed out, will certainly be there, and, and pro possibly his father, who is Michel Caspar. Um, those, those are the only two Caspar, uh, remaining Caspar uh, members from, from, from that line, as it were. Um, I did mention a half brother, and I don't know what uh, that line is, but it's not, it's not the same line. It's not the Maurice Caspar line uh, from Otto. Uh, but um, uh, they're, they're, my sister from, from the States and her, her husband will be, will be there, and um, my son, uh, and and many family family uh, members and friends uh, who have um, shared an interest, I suppose, by association with uh, with me, um, my late wife, and uh, and our interest in, in in the paintings which we've we've had for a very long time. And anybody who's ever come to see us in our uh, home, um, they can't have uh, failed to have seen the, the many paintings which are um, almost like a gallery running up up um, part of our part of our stairs so uh, uh, but the answer, short answer to the question is yeah there'll be lots of people um, I'm hoping to get the president of the of La Palette Cabougeoise to come as well but as I say I've had the, the former director of the Cabouge Museum who's still active within the museum and, and virtual he's he's coming across himself personally and uh that that's that's good good to hear and i, I i'm hoping also to um yeah there'll be there, i'm hoping that other people will will come as well mm, interesting um yeah there is another question here what made it if you know of course what made he choose watercolor instead of another medium for his art Simple. Could it be photography? I mean, do you know? I, I I'm afraid I don't know the answer to that question. No, no, I really don't. I, I um, yeah, it's a good question, but I, I, I you know, the short answer is I don't know. Um, I, I've never seen, I have never seen a painting of his in any other form. Um, you know, yeah. I've never seen a, 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 an oil painting of his um, but I, the, the sketches I, I have and I at the exhibition in London there will be um, um, a separate sort of display of those those sketches because they are they're beautiful in their own right um, there's there's a, a myriad of different subjects and things and he's, he's so precise and uh, but and yet so artistic with with his with his um with his drawing as well mm -hmm. 
And I think uh, I'll go for more one question here. Yeah. Um, the one participant asked, do you, do you know any more details about the Caspar connection with Odell? With who? Hodel. Oh, Hodel. Hodel. Yes. Yeah. No, I, I don't know because um, the connection was with um, Julie Fanny Morin, as you know, who was and became uh, Caspar, but uh, I didn't know her and I know she died before I knew her. Um, and um, no, you know, I. I as I said in the presentation, I, I've, I've inherited all, the, I've got a lot, of, a lot of material, a lot of documents and material and things and letters and photos and all sorts of things, but um, I don't have anything which, um, other than um, my aunt telling me and showing me the postcard and showing me and saying that that was her who, her, who had been a model and that she knew him before she met um, Otto, you see. so. It's, it's, it's sort of one step removed even from the Caspar family. But um, it would be, it would be it's, a, it's an interesting question and I might just try and follow that up, in fact, mm. with, a, you know, with, a, with, with, a hodl, um, with a hodler uh, family, if that's possible. Well, um, I cannot ignore this one. There's another, it's a comment and a question for Marie-José yeah. Lindon. Uh, she said, first, I would like to say thank you how much he enjoyed walking around Geneva, make she feel homesick. And then <laughs> she wondered, your grandfather had any contact with the painter, Alfred Heffels, who Alfred. shared the studio with Ferdinand Hodler at one point. Ah, right. Uh, sorry, what was what was the name? Alfred who? Alfred Hatfuls. Or Hatful? Um, I'm not, it, I, no, I don't, I'm not familiar with it, no. I think you have, unfortunately you have to remember that I'm, I'm, you know, um, <laughs> I'm two generations be behind, um, yeah. you know, and, uh, and, and I, and I haven't lived in Switzerland since, you know, my father, uh, my father was British and he met my mother over there um, in uh, 40, 44. Um, he was working in the, in, the, in the hotel business and worked in all the primary resort hotels uh, throughout Switzerland for 10 years. And then he met my mother who was actually then working as a, as a nanny and looking after royalties, children and uh, rich industrialists and, and people who who were in the hotels. And so they met like that. Um, uh, and um, I kind of forgot why I'm saying that specifically. I've lost the, I've lost the thread. But uh, um, no, I, 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 I um, no, only to say that's right, yes. That actually, yeah, born in Baal in '46, and then um, they both, we all came back to England in 1948, and I've been here ever since. I mean, I've gone back to Switzerland obviously regularly since then, but I haven't lived in Switzerland um, since 1948. Mm. Yeah. Thank you, Renee. I believe we have one last question, if I'm correct. Uh, okay. Okay. Renee Marine. Yes, one last question, Hane. Thank you for the presentation. So the question is, what do you hope will be the most important outcome of your exhibition in London next January? Oh, uh, well, I think I've kind of covered that um, in general comments and things uh, already, but I hope, I'm hoping for, um, I suppose, wider recognition of, uh, of him as, a, as an artist um, and as an architect and I, I well, there's one thing in particular though that I am interested in and uh, I'm pursuing with actually a university pre professor at the, at the University of Geneva uh, and that is that um, he as I said he was very involved as an architect hygienist 
in reporting on the condition of um, the you know, the Quai de Sergere and, and, and all about housing and, and, uh, and stock. Um, and I, 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 I know that he was, I, I think he was upset and, and uh, not in agreement with the decision that was taken at the end of the day to completely demolish that whole area and put up what exists now. And my, grand, my, my, my nephew, his great grandson is appalled by it himself, um, and uh, he's, he's of this generation, you know, much younger person, uh, and uh, and he's he's appalled by it too. So um, I I suppose if it brings what it might do is bring back uh, another kind of discussion on why that was carried out and whether it was wise to do so, and couldn't they have approach it in a different way and kept some of the heritage because a lot of this is I think about heritage and heritage is probably increasingly important in today's world. Thank you Renee and I'm, I'm sure we're all looking forward to to speaking more with you when we're gonna be able to see you <laughs> once again <Yeah>. well, <laughs> face to face. Yes, absolutely, and um, you know, and I, I'm, I'm I'm delighted that you you've you've um, decided to come and uh, have a have an evening of your own at the at the, at the exhibition one, one one evening. So um, that's an opportunity for other for your members to come as well, isn't it? Indeed, Rene. That's what I was going to say for all of our yeah. members and those that are listening to us. Uh, the New Helvetic mm -hmm. Society. We are going to organise uh, an event. Uh, there in um, hopefully with a bit of luck, we're going to have representatives of the embassy attending. But you know, with COVID nineteen and other probably um, priorities uh, at this stage, we're not uh, able to confirm exactly who's going to be able to attend on on the evening. But yes, it will it will be our pleasure to to be there and. Uh, yeah. And uh, and and be able to uh, to toast to to your work and the work of your of your grandfather and and, uh, and you, what yeah. he has achieved. And yeah. I would like to end our webinar here. I'd like to thank everybody uh, uh, who have participated. I hope you have found uh, tonight interesting. Certainly for me, it was very interesting. And I'm really looking forward to to the exhibition in in, in January, Renee. And thank you very much Great. for your help, Renee. Well, much you. appreciated. Thank you, and thank you to everybody who attended and, uh, and showed an interest. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.